Question one, just use the elimination method to eliminate y by multiplying the top equation by two. So we get two x plus two y is equal to 42. Bottom is x minus two y equals negative three. The two and the negative two cross out. So we get three x is equal to 39. So x would just simply be 13. Okay, number two, we could see that we have a y-intercept of negative two and the slope of three. Okay, well first we gotta find the one that has the y-intercept of negative two. You can see choice B does, and that's actually the only one that does, so B must be the answer here. All right, uh, number three, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this right here? Okay, well, um, I would just look for the last term first, so one times nine would be nine, nine plus 12 is 21. Okay, so I'm gonna test out A here since that does work. Uh, if we FOIL out that first part, we get x squared plus uh, 10x and then plus 9 plus 10x plus 9 plus 12. And you can see that becomes x squared plus 10x plus 21. Oh, look at that. That works. So choice A is fine. Okay, uh, number four here, we're going to go ahead and just use our answers to help us out. We're looking for the one that works for the inequality. So I always like to start in the middle here with choice C. And I always usually start with the second equation first because they expect people to do this. So, um, you know, they'll make most of them work for the top equation. So always start with the second one here for the second inequality. So if I did 4, 5, if I put in 5 here, we get 5 is greater than 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 9 is going to be 3. 5 is greater than 3. Oh, look at that. It works for that one. So then let's check the top one. 5 is greater than or equal to negative 2 times 4 would be negative 8. Negative 8 plus 11 is going to be a positive 3. Oh, positive 5 is greater than 3. So there we go. Okay, it works for both of them. So choice C actually right off the bat here. That was lucky. Um, just happens to work. Okay, number 5. Um, taking a look at this, we're finding the equation of the line. So first start with the slope. 4 minus 1 is 3 over 1 minus 0 is that. Uh, 1. So we're just going to get 3 over 1, which is 3. That means it has to be C or D here, and it goes to the point 0, 1, which means my y-intercept is positive 1. Done. Okay, number 6, we're just going to go ahead and um, test out our answers and see which one works here. But just kind of by looking at this, I could see 26 is going to be way too high, and 27 is going to be way too high. And if I put in 9, 9 plus 1, that's going to be square root of 10, so it's most likely not going to be that answer. So I'm actually going to try out 8 here first. So if I put an 8 to this, that's going to be the square root of 8 plus uh, 28 is 36, minus 2 times the square root of 8 plus 1 is uh, 9. So we're going to see, does that equal 0? Square root of 36 is 6. 6 minus 2 times 3, does that equal 0? Well, that's 6 minus 6, and yes, that does equal 0. So must be choice A. All right, number 7 here, we're trying to find y minus x. So why don't we just find out what they are? 105 and 35 is going to be 140, so that means this has to be 40 here because the triangle is 180. And if that's 140, these two angles together are 180, so this would be 140. So 140 minus 40 is just 100. Okay, question 8 right below that here. Okay, we're given a point and an equation. Just take your point and substitute it into that equation. So we'll get 6 is equal to k over 2. So multiplying both sides by 2 here, we get that k is equal to 12. And now we know our equation is y equals 12 over x. Let's see which one works. Okay, so 12 over 1 is not 3. 12 over 1 is not 4. 12 over 3 is not 3. 12 over 3, though, is 4. That's the one that works for this equation. So choice D. Uh, question 9 here. Um, if you look at your answers, they all just start with h equals something. It means you're just finding h here. So to find h, you're just going to square both sides here. So we get q squared is equal to 2dk over h. I'm going to multiply the h to the other side here. And then simply, if you're trying to get h by itself, just divide by q squared. And there you go. So it's 2dk over q squared. Uh, number 10, uh, you're trying to get them to be the exact same equation. It's infinite solutions. So I'm going to distribute this through. So we get 8x minus 2xc minus 2x. And I'm going to bring that x over by subtracting. So it's equal to 0 right now. Combine like terms, 8x minus 2x minus 1x. That's going to be 5x. And then I'm going to add the 2xc to the other side, 2xc, so it equals 2xc. Okay, well, x already equals x, so that means 2c over here has to be equal to 5. So if I just divide by 2, we get c is um, 5 over 2, okay, because you just had to make sure the left-hand side was equal to the right-hand side. For number 11, that negative 61 there, okay, if you're looking at y equals mx plus b, that refers to the slope. And this problem, the slope is like the change in y over the change in x, and the y value here was the population, and the x value was year. So we're looking at the change in population per year, and since it's negative, we know that it's decreasing. So it's the decrease in population per year 
and that's just choice D here. Okay, for number 12 here, um, what you want to do is just identify what your roots are first. So our roots are at x is equal to negative 3, x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to a positive 2. Okay, it's where it hits the x-axis, um, which means the factors that it came from were x plus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 2. But you'll notice that it cuts through at um, negative 3 there. So that has to have an odd multiplicity. And since it bounces, okay, at the negative 1, at the positive 2, those have to have even multiplicities. So 2, 4, or such, anything like that. So since all of the exponents here are 2s, I know it's going to be a 2. So we're looking for the one that looks like this. And you can see that that's just choice C. Um, number 13 up here, okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and solve this. We're going to do that by substituting this into our equations. So we get x plus 2 squared plus uh, negative 2x, 4 minus 3 is going to be a positive 1 squared equals 40. And then we're going to FOIL both of those out or distribute both of them out. So x squared plus 4x plus 4 um, plus 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 40. Uh, so x squared and 4x squared becomes 5x squared. 4x negative 4x reduces down. 4 and 1 will just give us 5 equals 40 minus off the 5 from both sides, we get 5x squared is equal to 35. Divide by 5, we get x squared is equal to 7. Take the square root and you get x is the square root of 7. Technically plus or minus, um, but they only have the positive version here. Okay, um, for number 14, uh, we're using that equation to figure out when it will increase by 0.5% every n months. Okay, this comes from that equation, if you remember, a equals p1 plus r to the t. Okay, so if we're increasing by 0.5%, okay, well, that's already shown in here, 1.005. So in order to increase that by it, our exponent's going to have to be equal to 1. Well, that will happen when t is equal to 3, because 3 divided by 3 is 1. So three years would be equal to 36 months. Number 15, which of the following is the equivalent form of this? Um, I see a 2x minus 2 in both terms here. So I'm just going to factor out a 2x minus 2, which is the same thing as like dividing by 2x minus 2 in each part here. So uh, when we do that, that just loses the square. So we're left with 2x minus 2. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So that's just 2x minus 2 and then 2x minus um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, that should be a minus 1, um, 2x minus 3, there we go, okay, and that's choice D. And uh, then we get to 16 here, the grid ends, or, so for this one, just take a t as negative 1 and sub that in, so we get 2s minus 1 is equal to 11, add the 1 over, we get 12, 2s is equal to 12, s is equal to 6. Okay, this one, let's FOIL that out. So we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 5. Bring everything to one side. We'll get x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Factor that down. We get x minus 2, x minus 3 equals 0. So either x is 2 or 3 work here. Just choose one of them. Number 18, you got to remember i to the 4th is the same thing as i to the 0, which is equal to 1. So this is really 16 times 1 minus 8 times a negative 1, i squared is negative 1, okay, you got to remember that rule as well, plus 4, so we get 16 plus 8 plus 4, which is just 28 there. Number 19, we're just going ahead and finding the equation, so first I would start by finding the slope, so change, uh, so we're going to do 17 minus 12, which is 5, 12 minus 8 is 4, so the slope is 5 over 4, which slope was the a value there, so a is 5 over 4. Now let's find the equation by subbing in one of these points. So we get 12 is equal to 5 fourths times 8 plus b. Um, 8 divided by 4 is 2. That becomes 10. 10 plus 2 would be 12. So b has to be 2 here. So we're looking for what's a plus b. Okay, 5 fourths plus 2. 2 is the same thing as 8 fourths. That would give me 13 fourths as my answer there. And then finally here, um, we know that the arc length AB is 3 pi, the radius is 5. What I would like to do is draw the full circle here and figure out the circumference. So the full circumference here, circumference remember is pi D, the radius is 5, so that means circumference is 10. So the whole circumference is 10 pi. That AB is just a fraction of the circumference. So we're saying that's 3 pi out of the 10 pi. And this angle, x, is out of 360. So I want to know then how much is that 
out of 360. So pi over pi reduces down. 10 times 36 would give me 360, so 3 times 36 would just simply be 108, and you have your answer.